The movie opens on a secluded island where many wealthy people are dining at a strange but exclusive restaurant. When the richest people in the world are bored with their money, this restaurant is where they go to bring joy back to their lives. The chef tells everyone how he killed his father with scissors to his throat and brings out a dish representing the incident. The chef tells everyone how he stabbed his alcoholic father in the thigh with scissors and brings out a dish representing the incident. Little do the guests know, this dining experience is going to be a different one than they expected. Following this, the movie shifts to a few hours ago. A rich young man named Tyler is surprising his girlfriend Margot with a dinner date. The young couple is going to an exclusive restaurant called Hawthorne, owned and operated by celebrity chef Julian Slowick and situated in the middle of a private island. The couple takes a boat to the island where they are joined by other rich elites, including a food critic and her editor, a movie star and his personal assistant, and three wealthy business partners. In other words, a bunch of snooty twats. Another rich couple, Richard and Anne, also join the group, and it seems that Margot and Richard know each other from somewhere. Soon, the guests reach their destination and are welcomed into the island by the head waitress, Elsa. She then takes the guests towards the restaurant while giving them a tour of the island. The guests also visit the living quarters of the restaurant staff. Elsa claims that the staff is like family to one another, and they start their day at 6 and end at 2 in the morning. Finally, the guests walk into the restaurant and take their seats. In the open kitchen, a number of chefs can be seen meticulously putting the dinner together, paying extreme attention to detail. Before excusing herself, Elsa instructs the guests not to photograph the dishes, as Chef Slowick says that the beauty of his creation lies in their ephemeral nature. Next, Chef Slowick arrives in the kitchen, and Elsa tells him about Tyler's undesignated guest, Margot. Here, we get to know that Tyler had reserved two seats at the restaurant about a year ago, but at that time, he was in a relationship with someone else. This means that Margot is technically not registered to be here. Slowick is clearly not happy about it, but he decides to let it pass. Meanwhile, the dinner is going to be a six-course meal, and the first course is brought out. As the guests start eating, Tyler covertly takes a snap of the delicacy. Everyone is in awe of the dish. However, Margot is not impressed. The staff then serve the second dish, and Chef Slowick finally addresses his guests. He urges everyone to not eat, but to taste, savor, relish, and feel. He then explains the dish to the guests and what it stands for. Margot isn't able to comprehend the chef's monologue, but it somehow manages to bring Tyler to tears. He continues to take pictures despite being afraid of getting in the chef's bad books. Tyler mentions that he is in love with the place, but Margot denigrates the food, saying that it is bang average. Afterward, the chef serves the guests extremely small portions of five different sauces. However, he doesn't give them bread because he believes that it is the food of peasants. The businessmen find the entire thing extremely ridiculous and demand bread. When Elsa firmly turns them down, the group threatens to bring the restaurant down because they are friends with the man who funded it. However, Elsa still refuses to give them bread and tells them that they will eat the food they are being served. On the other hand, Margot also hates the concept and refuses to eat. This attracts the chef's attention and he inquires if everything is fine. Margot bluntly tells him that there's not much to eat. After the awkward encounter, the chef walks over to an older woman eating by herself. She is revealed to be his mother. Meanwhile, Margot keeps looking at the wealthy guy, Richard. This makes his wife Anna suspicious, but he swiftly dismisses her concerns. After a while, the chef introduces the next course, which is called Memory. He then recalls the day his father came home drunk and got into a fight with his mother. Things quickly escalated and Slowick's father proceeded to strangle her with a telephone cord. However, in the nick of time, a young Slowick intervened by stabbing his father in the thigh with scissors. The guests find the story disturbing, but they brush it aside, assuming that it's fake, a bit of theater. Soon, they are served with house-smoked meat and tacos. Surprisingly, every single taco has an image printed on it, which will evoke strong memories among the guests. The food critic's tacos contain images of the restaurants she reviewed. The movie actor's tacos have a picture of his biggest flop. Similarly, the businessman's tacos have details of their illegal bank accounts. They immediately call Elsa and demand to know how the restaurant found these details, and they even threaten to shut the place down. However, Elsa refuses to reveal anything and walks away. Meanwhile, Anna's tacos have pictures of Richard and an unknown young woman. She orders him to explain, but Richard asserts that he has no idea what these photos mean. Looks pretty clear to me, chief. Tyler's taco has a picture of him secretly taking pictures of Slowick's food earlier. He panics and wonders if he should go and apologize to Slowick. However, Margot is livid that the chef would even do something like that and insists on sending the food back to the kitchen. Tyler rudely orders her to stop acting like a child, reminding her that he's the one paying for dinner. This upsets Margot, 
and she walks away. In the washroom, the chef arrives and asks her who she is. She introduces herself as Margot, but Slowick keeps saying that she shouldn't be here tonight. Later, Margot returns back to her seat, and Chef Slowick proceeds to introduce his protege, Jeremy, who has apparently created the next dish. The chef momentarily compliments Jeremy, but suddenly changes his attitude and starts talking rudely. Slowick says that Jeremy can never be a great chef because he only wants to be an understudy. Just then, Jeremy commits the unthinkable. Everyone is shocked and horrified, but Slowick tells them that it is a part of the show. A while later, they return to their tables, but Richard insists on leaving. Elsa repeatedly requests that he return to his seat, but he refuses to listen. As a result, the restaurant staff grab him and chop off his ring finger, much to everyone's horror. The guests are then warned that they will receive a much worse punishment should they even think about running away and ruining the chef's meticulously planned dinner. This is when everyone starts to panic, but an unfazed Tyler continues to relish his meal. Kids, this is how you identify a psychopath. Shortly after, Margot is called to the kitchen by Slowick, and he again asks her who she is. He tells her to come clean because he has planned this dinner painstakingly, and her unplanned presence is spoiling everything. He also tells her that all of them are going to die tonight. Slowick gives Margot 15 minutes to choose between the option of either dying with those who give or dying with those who take. Shocked and scared, she returns to her table in tears. Before the next course, Slowick allows his captive guests to ask him questions, and a man inquires as to why he is doing all of this. Slowick explains that he has grown tired of running his restaurant for a number of reasons. He has lost his passion for the craft, and every guest here tonight is responsible for this one way or another. The food critic was invited for the dinner because she has shut down many businesses with her bad reviews, while her editor is guilty of enabling her behavior. Meanwhile, Richard and Anne are regular customers of the restaurant, but they never even appreciate the food. Slowick bets that the couple can't name one dish he has served them, and he's not wrong. He then tells everyone about the angel investor who funded this restaurant. It's revealed that outside, Slowick has suspended the man above water. He says that the man has an unhealthy obsession with profits, and that he has harshly denigrated the restaurant's menu countless times. And, as everyone watches in horror, Slowick lowers the man into the water and drowns him. After 15 minutes, he calls Margot to his office and asks her to make a decision. The latter claims that she doesn't belong here, so he should let her go. However, However, Slowick groups her with the staff, saying that he can easily tell that she is not from a wealthy background. He then asks her about her relationship with Richard, because she has been eyeing him all night. Finally, Margot comes clean and reveals that she is actually an escort, and her real name is Erin. Richard is her former client, who has paid her handsomely in the past. Hearing this, Slowick empathizes with her, and mentions that he has had his fair share of bad customers. He says that he used to love cooking, but now, he doesn't have that vigor in him anymore. Before bringing out the next dish, Chef Slowick asks Tyler to reveal why he is there. Surprisingly, the latter says that he has been wanting to eat at this restaurant for months, and when he finally got the opportunity, he lunged at it, even when he was told in advance that everyone was going to die. Tyler also reveals that he hired Aaron to accompany him because he had booked a table for two, but his girlfriend dumped him, and without company, the reservation would have been cancelled. This infuriates Aaron, and she attacks him, but the staff quickly intervenes and calms her down. A while later, Slowick calls Aaron to his office and asks her to help him prepare the final course, the dessert. For the first task, he asks her to fetch a barrel from the smokehouse, to which she reluctantly obliges. Meanwhile, the movie star stands up and demands to know why he is being punished. Slowick reveals that he watched the actor's film, Calling Dr. Sunshine, and he hated it. He says that he watched it years ago on a busy Sunday, on one of his only days off from his incredibly busy job. But the movie completely ruined his mood. Slowick reveals that the memory of his face in that movie has haunted him ever since. Elsewhere, instead of going to the smokehouse, Erin breaks into Slowick's cottage, where she comes across a locked room. She tries to gain entry, but soon, Elsa shows up and confronts her with a knife. A struggle follows, and Erin ends up killing Elsa by accident. She is horrified by the incident, but she quickly collects herself and enters Slowick's room using Elsa's keys. Inside, she comes across numerous photographs and newspaper articles written about Slowick and the numerous accolades he has received over the years. In all the pictures, he appears sad 
and angry, except in the one from his teenage days when he used to work at a fast food chain. There, he used to make burgers, and he had one employee of the month. Next, Aaron notices a radio in the room, and she uses it to alert the Coast Guard about everything. She then returns back to the restaurant with the barrel. Slowick again sits Aaron down and explains that he's doing all of this because a chef is supposed to serve great food to the customers. But people don't want great food. They want an experience. Because of this, many chefs don't do their work with love, but under pressure. And as a result, the chef's art gets sidelined. Soon, a Coast Guard arrives, and before letting him into the restaurant, Slowick warns everyone against ratting him out. The officer tells Slowick that he received a complaint about multiple murders in this place. But the cunning chef replies that everything is fine here. Cunning indeed. Just then, the officer recognizes the movie star and asks for his autograph. The latter happily obliges, but instead of a signature, he writes, help me. As he is leaving, the Coast Guard notices this, so he pulls out his gun and threatens to shoot the chef. Finally, all the guests breathe a sigh of relief, and they proceed to tell everything to the officer. Unfortunately, it's revealed that the officer is actually holding a fake gun. Slowick then reveals that the officer is one of his chefs, posing as the Coast Guard. He also tells Aaron that he's aware that she tried to call for help. Slowick then proceeds to serve the final course, but Aaron quickly comes up with a plan. She announces that she didn't like his food and wants to send it back. This upsets Slowick, and he demands to know why she didn't like his food. Aaron responds that he has taken the joy out of eating, and that everything he has served was an intellectual exercise, rather than something someone would want to sit and enjoy. She says the food tastes like it wasn't made with love. At last, Aaron mentions that not only has he failed, but he has also bored her, and she's still hungry. This bruises the deranged chef's ego, and he asks her what she wants to eat. Aaron uses the opportunity to demand a traditional American cheeseburger with some fries. Taken aback, Slowick quickly moves to the kitchen and starts cooking. While he is at it, he is reminded of his younger days, when he was much happier and jolly. After a while, the burger is ready, and he serves it to Aaron. Surprisingly, she absolutely loves it, and finally praises his food. This makes him the happiest he has been in decades. Aaron then tells him that her eyes were bigger than her stomach, and he has served her more food than she can eat, and asks him if she can get the rest of the burger to go. Slowick briefly thinks to himself and agrees to parcel the rest of her food. Aaron is internally relieved, and she pays for the burger with a small tip before leaving. On her way out, she briefly pauses to look at the other guests, wondering if she can leave them to die, but Anna encourages her to go and save herself. After Aaron leaves, Slowick thanks everyone for dining at Hawthorne, and reveals that each one of them represents the destruction of his art and his life. Now, they get to be a part of it, part of what he considers to be his masterpiece. Slowick and his team of chefs then prepare the final dish, making each guest, all of whom have finally accepted their fate, a part of it. He dresses them all as s'mores, the most offensive food ever created, and at last, he lights everyone, including himself, on fire. Meanwhile, Aaron gets away from the island on a boat, as Hawthorne burns down in flames. I went out tonight to eat pizza and watch this movie, and the pizza made it kind of hard for me to read this script. The irony is insane.